I'm Charles Scott King, WNEW News. At nine minutes past ten, time for Sears Radio Theater. That's the theme from the Sears Radio Theater. Tonight, a program of adventure with Richard Widmark as your host. Here's a preview. Is it true that you've lost over 20 pounds on this first part of your voyage? I've, I've lost weight. I don't think it's that much. But even so, uh, do you think that you'll have the strength to continue on? I will go on. There's no question of that. The Sears Radio Theater will begin after this message from your local station. If I want to make sure I buy the right thing, then I look at a magazine. I look at the consumer magazine. I do a lot of price comparing before I buy. Well, if I'm thinking of buying a certain refrigerator or air conditioner, I ask around. I see what experiences people I know have had with that manufacturer. I found it best to check with my friends who have the product I want to buy. When I have to make a decision between two items, I just toss the coin. I just let my wife decide. I always buy things on Wednesday. I think that's my lucky day. <laughs> people have lots of ways to buy things. Some are good and some are not so good. But one way that really helps is to read and compare warranties just as you would price or quality. The law says on purchases of $15 or more, warranties must be available for you to see before you buy. You'll find that some are full and some are limited, so compare. A tip from the Federal Trade Commission. It's good to read warranties before you buy. And don't be bashful because it's your money. This is Richard Widmark. There she is. Even at dockside, still and without sail, there's something in her sleek lines that suggest motion and speed. The 54-foot white yacht is called Adventure, named for a ship of Captain James Cook, the great Pacific explorer. It's late afternoon, and the fog is beginning to roll in. Adventure stands ready and waiting, but deserted. Only an hour ago, her owner, her captain, Ian Janis, was carried from her shining teak deck to an ambulance, unconscious, unaware that his dream had been snatched from him on the very eve of its fulfillment. In a small white hospital room, Jessica Janice looks out of place. She's too strong, too young and healthy to belong here. She stares down at her father's comatose figure. The doctors can't explain to her what's happened. They suspect a stroke, but they can't be sure yet. All she wants is for her father to be returned to her as he had been this morning. A vibrant, vital man. She wants him to make his voyage around the world in his boat adventure, as he had always dreamed of doing. She leans close to him. Dad. Dad, can you hear me? Dad, I can't stand this. I can't see you like this. Please, won't you open your eyes? Look at me with that look of yours. Make me believe that this hasn't happened to you. Dad? I'm not going to let your dream go, Dad. I can't do anything for you here. I can only stand around and try not to cry. But there is something that I can do. I know I'm not the sailor that you are, but... I'm going to make the voyage. Try to hear me, Dad. I'm going. And I'm going to make it for you. Early the next morning, without fanfare, Jessica sails adventure down the channel, past the breakwater, and away from land. Her plan, as her father's had been, is to sail nonstop to Australia, then continue on across the Indian Ocean past Africa, into the South Atlantic around Cape Horn, and up the Pacific to this spot she was so quietly departing. There were very few other boats out, and the girl alone on the beautiful white boat went unnoticed. And that's only the beginning of our story.
Sears Radio Theater. A new adventure in radio listening. Five nights of exceptional entertainment every week, brought to you in Elliot Lewis production of the Sears Radio Theater. Our story, The Lone Voyager, by Pamela Russell. Our stars, Janet Waldo and Lynn Berman. The Sears Radio Theater is brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company. Sears, where America shops for value. I love to eat. But it takes so long to cook. That's why we both love our new Kenmore microwave oven from Sears. I can cook a five-pound roast medium rare in just 30 minutes or three strips of bacon in three and a half minutes on a paper plate. Bake two potatoes in eight minutes and cook vegetables faster than boiling them in water. That means less time in the kitchen. And more with you. Fast, clean, cool cooking with Sears Kenmore microwave ovens, all with automatic defrost. Choose the right model for your kitchen from the many styles available at most Sears retail stores. Sears National Automotive Sale. Get big national savings on the Sears Die Hard. Only $49.99 with trade-in. You save $8 on the maintenance-free battery that starts nearly every car at Indy. And save on Sears Dynaglass Belt and 28 tires. They're on sale now at 40% off spring 1979 general catalog prices. Plus federal excise tax. Dynaglass Belt and 28 tires. Save 40% at most Sears Tire and Auto Centers. Prices may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Stop at Sears. Honey, I can't sleep. Maybe you should try counting sheets. You mean sheep? No, Medley Sheets from Sears in so many great colors from light to dark. Rest easy knowing your bed looks fantastic because Medley Solids come in up to 24 colors like Indian Copper, Royal Blue, Lemon Yellow, and Jungle Green. But don't just count them. Mix and match them with Medley Pattern Sheets and Cases for a designer effect. Then dream in color tonight. Available at most larger Sears retail stores in the catalog. Out on the dark open sea, the boat adventure moves along silently. On a staff at the stem of the yacht hang two red lights set several feet apart. These out-of-control lights glow like unblinking red eyes, staring out into the blackness, warning other vessels that the occupant of adventure is asleep. But Jessica Janice is not asleep. She lies awake on the narrow bunk in the forward cabin, wondering, thinking, and questioning. It's so quiet, so unbelievably quiet. I feel as if I'm the only person on Earth. I wonder if this is how Dad feels. Is this what it's like to be in a coma? Such enormous, all-encompassing quiet. I wish I could know if he'd heard me when I told him that I was going. I hope he knows. Somehow I feel that he does. It should be... It should be Dad out here instead of me. It was his dream to sail around the world alone and... He's in that hospital with that awful machine beside him, whining, breathing for him. It seems so strange and wrong. Dad never wanted anyone to do anything for him. That's what Mother always said. Her voice so sad, so defeated. I guess that's why they divorced. He'd never let her do anything for him. Huh. And now I'm doing this. Now he has to have everything done for him. How he must hate it. Maybe it's wrong that I'm here. But who better than I? I've, I've been helping him plan this trip for over a year. I know every chart. I know every inch of adventure. And I love her almost as much as he does. One of the first things I remember is the smell of the ocean. And going to sleep in a swaying bunk like this one. But with pillows propped all around me so I wouldn't fall out. Before I could even read or ride a bicycle, I'd sailed with him a hundred times. If only I'd been able to eat some dinner. I feel so queasy. I've never been seasick before. Maybe I'm afraid. It's so quiet. I could play one of the tapes, but I should go to sleep. It's going to be a big day tomorrow. I need the rest. I made over 130 miles today. So many miles of ocean to Australia. It's so fast. 
there. It's hard to even imagine it. And yet, I'm out here in the midst of it all. And what is there between me and so much deep black water? A hull, seven-eighths of an inch thick. I keep feeling there should be more exhilaration, more excitement. But I can't quite make myself believe where I am and what I'm doing. What I'm attempting to do. I've begun a solo voyage around the world. Very few have ever embarked on such a trip, and fewer still have completed it, and yet that's what I'm doing. Maybe when I convince myself of it, I'll feel excited and exhilarated, or maybe the excitement and exhilaration should rightfully be saved until the end. I'm so tired. But I I can't make my thoughts stop. I feel very close to something. Perhaps it's just sleep. But I think it's myself. I've never been quite so alone in my life. The wind is blowing up. I love the sound of it. It's lulling, reassuring. My arms and legs feel so heavy. I'm tired, very tired. My eyes are finally closing. One more deep breath and I'll be asleep. I'll be asleep and when I open my eyes again, it will be light and my first night alone on the ocean will be past. Honey, we've been on the road all day, and you still look cool and crisp. Wearing these sear shorts and t-shirt help. They're so cool and packable on trips. I brought along several of each. The t-shirts come in solid shades, color keyed to the solid or patterned walking shorts, so I can affordably mix and match a vacation's worth of easy care sportswear. A summer's worth of looks. Mm-hmm, smart lady. Summer t-shirts and shorts from Sears. Cool, neat, and practical. Available in Mrs. Sizes. And now for men, a Sears super value on a vested four-piece suit. Just $89.97 is the special purchase price that buys a coat, two slacks, and a reversible vest that combine for a wardrobe of six different outfits. Come see for yourself that this special purchase, though not reduced, is an exceptional value. Sears vested four-piece suit, only $89.97 while quantities last. It's a value that's worth a special trip. Prices may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. No, maybe so. It's a sunny bunch of summer for girls on the go. Summer starts for your daughter with Easy Care halters, tanks, tees, and jogger shorts in colorful teams to switch around all summer. And each sunny bunch piece has a sunny saying and character screen print. Top, shorts, and play sets to pack a pretty bunch. When it comes to happy sportswear, the choice is sunny bunch. Jump into summer with sunny bunch fun wear for your girls in sizes 7 to 14. All items available at most larger Sears retail stores. Adventures sail swiftly in the fast approaching darkness. There is little twilight. It is bright blue-white day and then black night. The second long night out on the sea is just beginning. Jessica, after a day of strenuous single-handed sailing, sits below, exhausted, muscles aching, hunched over her journal. She is writing of the previous night when wrenched from sleep by the sound of a terrible crash. She had feared that her voyage just begun was at an end. And even possibly, her life. I ran up on deck not knowing what I'd find there. I was confused, disoriented, still groggy with sleep, and frightened, terrified, my heart thudding in my chest. I couldn't believe what I saw. I had visions in my mind of disaster and destruction, but instead I found everything in order. I ran crazily from stem to stern, thinking perhaps I had dreamt that horrible sound, but I knew that it was no dream. The boat was going beautifully. I checked the self-steering gear on the tiller. It was functioning properly. I looked to the mast in the main boom. 
I'd feared finding them broken and adrift, but there was nothing but peaceful, blind motion. I stood at the stern and tried to think what could have happened. And then, in the rushing white wake so near, so very close to me, I thought that I saw a huge shadowy form. My heart, which had calmed and started to go evenly, jumped and began to race once again. The form was too big to be anything but what I feared most. It had to be a killer whale. I knew that was what adventure had come up against. I tried to remember all that I knew about killer whales. The one fact that kept playing over and over in my mind was how they did battle. They, they would jump upon their opponent until it grew exhausted and finally died. I tried to put from my mind the vision of a killer whale jumping on adventure. I bent down closer to the water to see. But it was impossible. I went below. I couldn't sleep again. This morning I replaced the cutlery and cans that had been thrown about and scattered across the cabin. They were my only proof that the night before had not been a nightmare. I was glad for that proof. Nightmares frighten me far more than any reality. I made my 140 miles today. It was good sailing. But through the tiredness, I can only feel a twinge of accomplishment. I thought that I was in better shape than this. I'm only 27 after all, but... I think that more than any physical exertion, the idea that everything rests totally on my shoulders wears me out. I begin to understand Dad and his great love of independence. The sea fosters that love for its cruel and its ability to destroy the weak and dependent. I'm going to try and reach Los Angeles on the radio telephone tonight. I suppose that I'm not yet so independent that I don't long to hear the sound of a human voice. Other than my own. Hello? Hello, Los Angeles. This is Adventure. Hello? This is Angeles. Los Angeles. Could you? Los Angeles. I. I'm not receiving you. Hello, Los Angeles. We have. Report of a... I'm... I'm not reading Los Angeles. Los Angeles. Wind up to 80 knots. Hurricane. I'm not receiving you, Los Angeles. Do you hear me? I'll try another transmission later. Hurricane. Warning. Hurricane. Up by Hurricane. Hurricane off Baja. I'm headed straight into it. Twenty days and nearly 3,000 miles traveled. I've survived killer whales and hurricanes, becalmed seas and impossible radio communications, but... Today was the most disturbing of all. A tanker was coming up fast to the windward of me. I, I tried to contact them with a signaling lamp, but they didn't see me. The tanker took all the wind, and for a time I lost control of adventure. Luckily, the rigging was not damaged, but the incident troubled me greatly and still does. I felt as they passed me that I didn't exist. I was invisible, lost somewhere between heaven and earth. Then the tanker disappeared on the horizon, and I was alone on the sea once again. Sears Radio Theater will return after this message from your local station. I'm proud to be a member of a great team, and I'm equally proud of my family, Stormy, my wife, and our two children. They're both healthy, normal kids. 
But you know, there are some children in this world, in your neighborhood, who are not so lucky. They were born with handicaps, injured in accidents, or disabled by illness. All they want is an equal chance with other children to work, to play, to learn, and to feel they will have a place in the world when they grow up. The Easter Seal Society is preparing both children and adults for tomorrow, rehabilitating them, giving them a chance to become self-respecting citizens. That's why I support the work of Easter Seals. As a member of the National Easter Seal Sports Council, we hope you support your local Easter Seals program. It's a great way to help handicapped people. You've changed, Bernard. You're not the man I married. What do you mean, Francine? Remember the way you were, vulnerable. You made mistakes. But now, look, you're confident. Everything you do turns out right. It's that book you sent away for. It's just a catalog mm. from the Consumer Information Center. It lists more than 200 federal publications you can send for. On building, fixing, eating... Buying, selling, working, playing, living... And more than half of them are free. Yes, Francine, the man you married is gone for good. Mm. All right, Bernard. But would you make just one more mistake for old time's sake? All right. For you, oh. I'll just replace that window glass like I used to. Whatever you do, learn to do it better. Send for your free catalog. Just write Consumer Catalog, Pueblo, Colorado, 81009. Francine, send for that publication on first aid. What was that address? Pueblo, Colorado, 81009. That tanker would be the last ship Jessica Janice would see until she came into Melbourne. Across the wild and killing Tasman Sea, she sailed adventure to the Australian port that many an old clipper ship had sought in vain and never reached. Now Jessica sits on the deck of adventure in the bright Melbourne sunlight, haltingly answering the rapid-fire questions of a reporter. A young man lounges nearby within earshot and listens, but listens with an interest that belies his casual stance. Was there ever a time when you thought you might not make it here, Miss Janus? Not just one time. There were, there were many, many times. And you thought of giving it up? Quitting? I thought I might die. Are you actually willing to give your life to make this voyage around the world alone? I, I suppose that I am. And what's your motivation? Or what drives you? Why are you doing it, Miss Janus? Uh, what are you trying to prove? Well, I, I just want to do it. I don't really think I'm, I'm trying to prove anything. Oh, you're not trying to prove that a, a woman is capable of doing anything that a man can? No, I'm definitely not trying to prove that. This began as my father's dream. When he was unable to make the voyage, I took over for him. If there's any reason that can be given for what I'm doing, I suppose that's it. Then you mean you're making this trip for your father? Yes. Uh, not completely, though. That's, that's simply how it began. But you do have your own reasons. Now I do. And what are they, Miss Janice? I'm not sure. All I know is that I have to sail. I must do this. It's difficult for me to explain. I, I've been alone for a long time. My main concern has been with surviving. Your questions are difficult for me to answer. Not that they aren't valid, but they don't have that much meaning for me right now. They're hard for me to understand. Sailing alone for an extended period of time changes your perspective, your your perception of things, what's important and what isn't. I wonder if we could do this interview at another time, perhaps when I'm better adjusted to the world again. Out there where I've been is a, is a very different world from this one. Oh, then you're planning on being in Melbourne for a time. Yes, uh, through the month anyway. There's some repairs that need to be made on the boat, some adjustments made. Yes. Well, uh, just one last question, Miss Janice. Yes? Uh, is it true that you've lost over 20 pounds on this first part of your voyage? I've, I've lost weight. I, I'm not exactly sure how much. 20 pounds sounds an awful lot. I, I don't think it's that much. But even so, uh, do you think that you'll have the strength to continue on? I will go on. There's no question of that. I'd like to come back in a week or so and uh, ask you a few more questions, Miss Janice. Oh, yes. Yes, all right. Come again. Maybe then I won't be quite so vague, so so slow on the uptake. I'll be back, Miss Janice. Goodbye.
Hello. Hi. I'm David Flynn. The architect? Yes. Oh, I've been expecting you. Come on board. Mm. I've gotten glowing reports about you from my friends here. Are you as good as they say? Yes. Probably better. And modest, too. I never counted modesty as a virtue. Usually it's just a lie. I suppose. I think I just missed seeing you about ten years ago. That's right. You were crewing on your father's boat. We won that year. Barely. You just beat my father. And I suppose you think if you'd been with him, he would have won? I do. Oh, I remember how angry I was when I couldn't go on that race. I had to return to Oxford. It was my first year up there, and it wasn't easy. Oh, I was angry when I missed that race. Then the anger turned to pain. That was my father's last race, and I didn't have it with him. I'm sorry. He was a wonderful man. We were all very friendly adversaries on that race. I think it was one of the best times of my life. Mm. Oh, how is your father doing? He's the same. I was on the phone last night. He's still in a coma. Oh, I'm very sorry, Jessica. I was listening when you were talking with the reporter just now. You have absolutely no business attempting this, you know. That reporter went away thinking the same thing, and he'll probably print it. You don't think I can do it? Well, your father was equipped to make this voyage. He was probably one of the few people on Earth who was, but you're not. I've made it thus far. Uh, you haven't gone around the horn yet. I've just been through the Tasman Sea. I think that says something about my abilities. I think it says something about your luck. And now you're pushing it. Listen. I asked you to come and look over Adventure because I've had some problems with her and I thought you might be able to help. You're supposed to be a good naval architect. But obviously you don't want to help me, so why don't you just go now? I didn't say I wasn't going to help but you. But I'm saying I don't want your help. I think you're arrogant and egotistical. I, I don't think we could work together. There are lots of good naval architects. Ah, but you're going to need the best. Do you want to know what I think, Jessica? No, not particularly. I think you're stubborn, stupidly stubborn. I don't care what you think. And I think you're the skinniest and the most beautiful girl I've ever seen in my life. But I don't like the shape of your hull. I beg your pardon? Right over here, this hull. It's all wrong, especially for Cape Horn. Oh, there's nothing wrong with the hull. It makes it very easy to capsize. You might not come back up. Well, I don't believe it. But that's a risk I'll have to take. I haven't the time to change the hull now. I want to be out of here within the month. That's impossible. It'll take at least two months for me to refit this boat properly. I may be able to brace that hull. Who said you were going to do it? I did, and I'm going to. Did you mean what you told that reporter? What? That you were willing to give your life to make this voyage? Did I say that? I suppose I meant it. You'd better, because you're liable to do just that. Have you considered how your father would feel about this? I haven't thought of much else. But I... I really don't want to talk about it. All right, Jessica. How did your boyfriend feel about you going? How do you know if I have a boyfriend or not? You do, don't you? Yes. I did. Well, what did he think? I don't know. I left him a note telling him. A note? That was big of you. What did this warm little note say? Hi, I'm sailing around the world alone. See you in a year or so. Best regards, Jess. It was the best I could do. Do you think he'll be waiting for you? I doubt it. He's not the patient type. I really don't want to talk about it. What do you want to talk about? Adventure. And what it's going to take to get her ready so I can leave here as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. Do you think we'd be able to work together? Yes. I want to say this now. I have no intention of becoming personally involved with you, David. All I want is to make this voyage. I'm going to do it. That's all that matters to me. And afterwards, if and when you've done it, what then? I'll think about that then. Are you leaving? I'm going up to check the rigging. I don't believe in keeping ladies waiting. You want out of here? I'll get you out of here in a hurry and with pleasure. Thank you. You're welcome. Jessica, close that book. I want to talk to you about the self-steering gear. 
Is there something wrong, David? No, it works properly. Well, what then? You shouldn't rely on it when you're rounding the horn. Oh, I can't stay awake 24 hours a day for days on end. Exactly my point. In those seas, you have to be constantly alert, aware of your course, and paying close attention to the sails at all times, Jessica. You shouldn't be sleeping below, depending on that self-steering gear. In other words, I shouldn't go, and this is just one more in a long line of your lectures. I know. We've both been working very hard these last two months, getting you ready to go, but I've never wanted you to, not from the first day. I don't know why I wanted to work on adventure. Call it perversity. Or maybe I just wanted to be with you. David, you remember what I said. I don't want to get involved. That was the rule. No involvement. So I broke it. I didn't. Are you sure of that? No. No, I'm not. <laughs> You're a hazard. <laughs> you should be listed in the Admiralty's sailing directions, along with all the other treacherous <laughs> currents. <laughs> oh, are you feeling a little off course? <sighs> Maybe. Will you put aside the sailing directions and the pilot charts for a little while and come for a swim with me? Oh, I, I, I really should. Come on, I'm all finished here. I've checked and rechecked everything on adventure. She's ready. The sails have just come back. Oh, they're back? How do they look? Good. Oh, then I can leave? Any time. Jessica, come for a last swim with me. I'll race you out to the raft. All right, David. <laughs> <sighs> you cheated. <laughs> you should have at least said, one, two, three, go. I never cheat. I am not a cheat. Merely an opportunist. You gave me the opportunity to begin before you, so I took it. Cheat? Opportunist. Oh. Is it oh. so important that you always win, Jessica? <laughs> Oh, I suppose that winning is as important to me as it is to you. Oh. You love to win, David, and you know it. You're in no position to blame me for loving it, too. Jessica, don't go. David, please don't start. I'm going. Nothing you can say will stop me. Nothing. Nothing. I remember the first day I saw you, you were sitting cross-legged on the deck of Adventure and that reporter was standing over you asking you questions a mile a minute. You were so skinny. Well, I've, I've gained some weight. You're still the most beautiful girl I've ever seen. David. Don't ask me not to say it, it's true. Did that reporter ever come back? Yes. And he asked me a lot of questions I still couldn't answer. I don't know why I have to do it, but I do. It's... It's, it's all tangled up with my father and his dream. Only now it's become my dream, too. I, I couldn't explain it to the reporter, and I can't explain it to you, David. Jessica, would you... Would you let me go with you? Oh, don't think I don't know how hard it was for you to ask me that. But no, you can't go with me. It wouldn't be the same. You wouldn't be alone. That's right. And you have to do it alone. Yes. It's crazy. I've worked like a slave getting you ready to go, and your going is the last thing in the world that I want. Why did I do it? Because I needed you. You're going to need me when you go around the horn, too. Probably. But I won't have you, so I'll have to do it myself. And I will, David. Jessica, I love you. And that's crazy, too. I know it. My... My parents were divorced when I was 13, David. It tore me apart. I didn't understand. I, I truly believed that they loved each other, and they did. But that wasn't enough. Dad had this need, this obsession, to be his own man, to go his own way, not to be answerable to anyone or anything, to be alone. And love couldn't counterbalance that need. He never should have married. In fact... He doesn't even belong in this century. He should have been with Captain Cook and the others, all, all the others who, who never really arrived, but searched all of their lives. Searched for what? A place to stop. Peace. Are you trying to tell me that you're like your father? Yes. I didn't even know it myself until I began this voyage. I have to do it. Maybe I'll feel differently after it's over. I, I know that right now it would be... It would be very easy for me to stay here with you, but I can't. 
I don't know if I'll be there when you finished your voyage. I wouldn't expect that. I wouldn't I wouldn't ask it of you. Damn it, I know. And that's just the reason that I'll probably be there waiting for you. Come on, David. I'll race you to the beach. No. I don't want to race with you anymore, Jessica. When are you planning to leave? Tomorrow morning. Are you coming, David? I'd like to have you take a look at that wind direction indicator. Yes, Jessica, I'm right behind you. I'm out of control. Be cool, be natural, take it light. But where do I start? With the basics like the new Pretty Natural Light Shaper from Sears. The Pretty Natural Light helps keep you smooth all day under your clothes, giving you a shape that's soft and natural thanks to the shimmery lightweight power net. Never intimidates because its control is moderate with a front panel that helps keep your tummy where you want it. Great! I'll ease into control with a Pretty Natural Light. It's new at larger Sears retail stores. All across America, folks are saving at the Sears Pre-Memorial Day Sale. We picked up Sears Easy Living Flat and Ceiling Paints for only $8.99 and saved $4 per gallon. And on Easy Living Semi-Gloss Paints, too. These are Sears' best quality paints at a great price. I got rugged Sears Weather Beater Paint for only $9.99 and saved $5 a gallon. That's a 30% savings on durable Sears Weather Beater Paint. It's, it's the Sears Pre-Memorial Day Sale. Available at most Sears retail stores. Prices may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. <laughs> Who has short shorts? Sears has short shorts. In pre-washed denim at the budget shop. The budget shop? Yeah, but I thought that's known for... for value? It is. You know how rock teams with roll? Well, price teams with active, fun styling at the budget shop. Like Easy Care Polyester Terry t -tops. And short shorts. A look and feeling that's cool, man. Cool. Pre-washed, too. In navy or white polyester and cotton with all the jean style details. Terry and denim are ready to bop in Sears budget shop. At most larger Sears retail stores stores. Richard Widmark again. And here's the concluding act of the Lone Voyager. Jessica? Jessica? David! Oh, David, what are you doing here? I thought we said goodbye yesterday. I know, Jessica. Haven't you gotten the current weather report? Yes, I have. There's a big storm blowing up from the south. Yes, I know all about it, but I'm not waiting. Don't be an idiot. You can postpone leaving for one day. What possible difference would one day make? I can't wait, David. Not for a day, not for anything. I I have to go now. Why? Because I'm afraid if I don't go right now, I won't go at all. I'm afraid, David. Are you satisfied? I've said it. I'm scared to death. Of sailing around the Horn? Yes, of the Horn and the Indian Ocean and the Atlantic and the Pacific. And of you. These last two months with you have been wonderful, and that scares me. Now, please get off my boat, David. I have to go. All right, Jessica. You're free, Jessica. Goodbye. Goodbye, David. I love you. survived this voyage alone. All of the perils, the storms, the calms, everything. And now I have a companion. Poor little bird. How did you happen to find yourself out in the middle of all of this, my friend? And are you wondering the same thing about me? You look very young. Is your wing hurt? Let me see. Oh, oh easy, easy now. I'm not going to hurt you. I want to help you. Let me look at that wing. Hmm, he must have been blown up against my mast. The wind is nearly four six out there. Poor little bird. You stay right there. I'm going to see if I can't rig up some kind of splint for your wing. This is supposed to be a first aid kit for people, but let's see if we can't find something for you, bird. Hmm, this should work. Don't be afraid of me. This will help you, I promise. You won't like it much now, but it'll make your wing better. And when you're all better, you can fly again. But not into another storm like this one, I hope. There now. I'm going to put you in this carton. And I want you to stay there. It seems to be calming down a little. 
I'm going to try and reach Melbourne on the radio now. Will you stay in the box for me? There's a good bird. You'll be better in no time. Hello, Melbourne. Hello? Hello? This is Adventure. Hello? This is Melbourne. We're receiving you, Adventure. There's someone here who's been waiting to speak with you. Jessica? David! Hello, Jessica. I wanted to tell you that just after you left this morning, I spoke with someone. Who? Your father. Dad? Yes. I... Wait. On the telephone. He said... Wait. Wait. I can't hear you, David. I'm... I'm losing you. What did he say? Is he all right? David? David? He's very proud of you, Jessica, of what you're doing. How is he? How is Dad? There's still some paralysis, but the doctors are very hopeful. And he said that he was proud of me? He's glad then, David? Yes. And Jessica? Yes, David. I am too. I was wrong to try and stop you. Now, don't get cocky. You're not home yet. There's still the horn. You're sailing into the most dangerous... David? David? <laughs> Bird, how can you just sit there? Oh, this water feels good. It's so hot. But if I douse myself with seawater, I don't seem to get so thirsty. I have to watch that water supply. There's a long way to go yet. But we're getting nearer to the horn every day. Speaking of we, Bird, just how long are you going to tag along with me? How's the wing? The splint's been off for days and you haven't even tried to fly. Oh, look what a beautiful day it is, Bird. Don't you just ache to fly up into that blue sky? Well, don't you, Bird? Or are you scared? Well, you can stay with me for as long as you like. I understand all about being afraid. I'm afraid too, Bird. Maybe you'll still be with me when we get to the horn. And you'll see one of the things I'm scared of. on sailing quite so close to the horn, but suddenly it was there, that black island looming far too near. By my estimation, some of the waves I encountered today must have been nearly 100 feet high. It's awesome beyond words to be out in such a sea, and I'm not through it yet. Only now it's night, and the waves are huge and black instead of their enormous daytime green. That's the only difference. Their fatal force appears to be the same now as today, and I appear to be my same fragile self, alone. Yet somehow, after living through today, I'm not the same as I was, and I never will be again. standing here with this excited crowd that has gathered here today to welcome home Jessica Janice after her successful solo voyage around the world. She's coming up the channel now. Our cameras are on her. A Coast Guard escort and hundreds of small pleasure craft are surrounding her. Her courage and daring are being wildly applauded and acclaimed throughout the world, but nowhere so much as here. This spot where she quietly slipped away alone so many months ago. Now she's returning for this tumultuous greeting Jessica Janice and her boat, most appropriately named Adventure after circumnavigating the globe. They're coming quite close to us now. The crowd is pressing forward, eagerly anticipating the moment when Jessica Janice steps ashore among them. Well, Bird, this is it. It's over. I did it. Do you believe it? I'm not sure that I do. Would you look at all those people, Bird? Just look at them. I, I, I think I see Dad. Yes, it is Dad. And David, David's with him. You know what, Bird? Now, for the first time, I really know I've done it. I can do it alone. I know that I can. And now I don't have to anymore. What about you? What am I going to do with you? Are you still afraid, Bird? Oh, come on. Fly for me. 
planned it perfectly for me. Fly, bird. Fly for yourself. <laughs> Goodbye, bird. Goodbye. single gull flies in the rising spiral above. And there she is, Jessica Janice, her hand raised in greeting, the lone voyager, home at last. Sears National Automotive Sale. Get big national savings on the Sears Die Hard. Only $49.99 with trade-in. You save $8 on the maintenance-free battery that starts nearly every car at Indy. And save on Sears Dynaglass Belted 28 Tires. They're on sale now at 40% off spring 1979 general catalog prices. Plus federal excise tax. Dynaglass Belted 28 Tires. Save 40% at most Sears Tire Auto Centers. Prices may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Stop at Sears. A medley of moods above your windows, easily created with Sears Decorative Travers Drapery Rods. Finishing touches that you install yourself. Capture the rich look of fruit wood, antique designs, brass or copper, all with finials that are antique finish by hand. Chrome color rods gleam brilliantly, and Sears Trimension Rods keep a country sculptured wood effect always in view. All are strong, adjustable steel rods with plastic trim. Sears Decorator Rods, the crowning touch to your rooms. What's in the bag? A package deal from Sears that lets me put my best foot forward. How's that? I saved 20% on this five-pair bag of all-pro sports socks. What great looks, great fit, and the savings really stack up. 20% off. You saved the bundle all right. But are there other socks on sale? Choose from casual, sporty, and support styles, too, in three- or five-pair package deals from Sears. All at 20% off. Sale ends May 26th. Dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Available at most larger Sears retail stores. The Sears Radio Theater has been brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company, where our policy is satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. Sears, where America shops for value. The Lone Voyager was written by Pamela Russell, produced and directed by Elliot Lewis. Your host was Richard Widmark. Our stars were Janet Waldo and Lynn Berman. Featured in the cast were William Woodson, Ben Wright, and Lee Millar. The music for Sears Radio Theater was composed and conducted by Nelson Riddle. This is Art Gilmore speaking. Associate Director of Sears Radio Theater is Ken McManus. Sound effects were created by Bud Tollefson. Mark Trella is Production Supervisor. And the recording engineers are Joe Wachter and Hal McDonald. The Elliot Lewis production of Sears Radio Theater is a presentation of CBI. Blanche and Tony are deeply in love. It was their perfect night, a beautiful night, with all the proper ingredients for murder. Honey, pass the whipped cream. I will not. Blanche, I love whipped cream. Do you love me? Of course I do. More than whipped cream? Tony, you're overweight as it is. Now, Thelma... Thelma? Thelma's doing volunteer work for the American Heart Association, and she was telling me... A lot, knowing Thelma. Tony, I'm serious. A fatty diet is no good for your heart. I don't want you having a heart attack. But, honey... Tony, you could use a lot less, honey. You've been living on sugar alone. Now, we're going to get the American Heart Association's cookbook and make our diets heart healthy, so we can be together for a long time. Oh, Blanche. You're sweet. Sweet? Yeah, I know. Contact your American Heart Association for information about a heart-healthy diet. We're fighting for your life. In the South, volunteers work on cooperatives where poor farmers are shown a more productive way to farm their land. In Appalachia, volunteers have started nutrition programs and adult literacy classes. And in northern cities, volunteers are working long hours to convince ghetto residents there are new ways to bring life to a dying neighborhood. They're VISTA volunteers, volunteers in service to America, who devote a year working to give poor people a greater capacity to help themselves. Because it's not only a lack of money that makes people poor, it's a lack of knowledge and resources.
resources within their community. Thanks to VISTA, there are now programs that will carry on long after a volunteer leaves. People are now finding out they can have a voice in solving the problems that affect their lives. America needs more VISTA volunteers. It often means the difference between help and no help at all. Put yourself where you're needed. Call toll-free 800-424-8580 or write VISTA, Washington, D.C., 20525. A public service of this station and the Ad Council. Next Monday, Sears Radio Theater will be a story of the West with Lorne Green as your host. Let's listen. Uh, we're estranged. Estranged? You ain't even been consummated. I couldn't believe it. She raised her voice to me. I so wonder it took so long. Uh, I deserve it. I've been a fool and a slow fool at that. So be sure and tune in next Monday to the Sears Radio Theater. On WNEW Metro Media Radio, New York.